Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 start off. Yeah. Okay. But, but you can start with one person. <coughs> we have privilege to be in conversation with most of our country, this you know, nine representative on the Monopino Young Girl. You did a communication yesterday, which was involved by the House of Representatives plenary, asking for the rewriting of our history. What background were you really talking about when you talk about rewriting? Well, let me say um, the purpose for which I have asked my colleagues to see reason to make a budgetary allotment for the rewriting of our history. Uh, basically, my, my main purpose is to make sure that some of those things that are not as young people we were told about the material. Um, I attended a dialogue, my colleagues, because this is a project, um, the, the legislative information service. And uh, they came up with a project they want to rewrite the history. There are some historical analysis about this legislature that we also do not know. And the LIS having to be the, the, the bureau that is responsible for information services is also seeking that we go to write these histories so that it can be recorded. If you ask a young now, we have to start putting our history after us. Like I said yesterday in, in session, I was in Ghana. I was in a car and I listened that his daughter could not run for president of Ghana because her father, Kwame Nene, one of the guys in studio said they're in descent. And so it was that Nkrumah is from Liberia. And interestingly, the historian, Joseph S. Guano, Reverend Emmanuel Bou and our former public works minister, Yulu Gray, it is the nephew of Kwame Nkrumah. Those things should be put, read it, and this is the reason why I to set aside funding. I recall and 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 and, and reconciliation process and, and cardinal responsibility on a, before uh, Senator We Are became when Lehman Bowie was there. They started to talk about writing. There are some ingredients that are supposed to be there that are not there. And I thank God, thank you, that my colleagues. I saw wisdom they understood tomorrow Reverend Emmanuel Buyo and uh, Dr. Joseph Seguano will be in this building to talk to the committee on some of the informations that they themselves need to know about this legislature. You need to know why the legislature, why the Capitol building is situated where it is. Why the executive mansion, there are some people who say the front of the mansion is before the sea. There are a lot of argument with Liberians. Interestingly, the front of the executive mansion is not before the sea. It is before the Capitol building. But a lot of people say the front because it's a guiding. So all of these things, there are historical analysis to why this building was positioned where it is. Or, or when, 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 you, when you think about uh, history, you, you always mention two questions in, in Liberia, to say, say, go and we and and all of you being condemned, Joseph said one book that this book as you wrote is not accurate. Do you trust your expertise when it comes to the rewriting of the history? Well, well, I may mention that I went to a symposium mm -hmm. and they spoke, they were the panelists. They are not the only historian in the country. So mm -hmm. like, you, like you are saying now, people say Dr. Guano informed will be given the opportunity to sit to the table so that our history can be rewritten. Now, others, I listen and I read others' argument that, hey, you cannot rewrite history. Hey, history can be rewritten. History can be amended. History can be repealed. We have to be very mindful because if we do not understand where we came from as a people, we will not be able to appreciate where we are and where we're going. Interestingly, the other day, we were celebrating Thanksgiving Day, and I listened to a young man I called on the radio and said why he doesn't celebrate Thanksgiving Day. Because the Thanksgiving, the act of legislation that, you know, declared that day as Thanksgiving, in his mind, from what he read back then, that the Thanksgiving purpose was when the indigenous Liberians were defeated by the American Liberians. Oh and they declared that day as a victory day. Let us thank God, thank you, 
for, uh, for the fact that we have taken the land from the indigenous. That's his belief. That's what he saw in the book. But interestingly, the Thanksgiving that we are celebrating in Liberia is the actual Thanksgiving wherein when the people from, from Great Britain decided to attack Liberia, they wanted a portion of Cape Mount. And the president at that time said they could not give Cape Mount. It is within the borders of Liberia and it will not be given to Sierra Leone. And so they came with their warship and the president and some of his men walked into the Providence Baptist Church and they spent three days in the church fasting and praying. When they came back also that warship was gone and it was at that point they declared, let us tell God thank you that the battle, because at that time Liberia never had military, we never had the police and so coming to be attacked by the the British, you can imagine what would have happened. So they were only thanking God that God intervention, they turned around. That is another historical analysis that is not rating for our children to see. The Honorable, uh, don't you say that uh, your suggestion will follow <laughs> spark of more confusion in that there are mindsets already about some of the events that have occurred in the past and those mindsets are continue to be carried on and passed on to the foreign people. Not because it was not properly done, meaning that the nation should continue in that path. You can have a mindset, and, and, and it might be dangerous to the state to be living in that mindset. Yeah, his foreign education on the Liberian scholarship. These things have to be written for our children. Not many of us know that the first flag of Liberia had a blue cross and not a star. They only put what they wanted us to know. And so we are saying, we read, and today we are living in the mindset that Matela Nipo was a hero or a heroine. So we have to get to the point where we, you know, we go back to the drawing board and understand where we are coming from as a nation. Like you said, some people are saying Liberia was colonized by the American Colonization Society. Why others are saying Liberia was never colonized. So at this particular point, we need to balance that history. We need to balance that record. And so we are saying historians come together. That's the taxpayer money. But we need to do the right thing with the taxpayer money. And I'm asking, I'm one of those people asking that the history be written properly. If there are some contradictions, we need to settle that. And there, if there are informations that our people need to get, we need to go about giving those information. Quite interestingly, we don't talk about some of our heroes in our history. Madam Swakoko, those kind of women, LIS, our legislative information service, to making these documentations available. What was the first legislation that was passed by the first legislature? Who are those people that serve in the first legislature? Today we are talking about the 53rd National Legislature with no history. Don't you see that as a, as a I mean, challenging task in the, most of those records or, 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 or evidences that are supposed to back these stories are I mean, where, where the damage or loss? You see, the you see so, I will tell you, regardless of the war that we fought, there are documentation still available in our, in our archive. You can go back there. That's why people who live and they are still alive, they have become uh, physical experienced individuals that you can go to and ascertain information. Histories are not written by people who are dead. History are written by people who are alive. It's, a, it's, it's an, a, a, a court, a record of things that happened in the past and present. And those that write them are people who are alive and then when they are gone, they refer to them you know, the dead historian who wrote. So this is a piece of work that live on even at the death of the author, the materials they live on. And so, well, I tell God, thank you that my colleague saw wisdom and to pass it on to the committee to review that. And I'm hoping that uh, my request be fully endorsed in this national budget. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.